Hey, I'm Spencer Powell, and welcome back to Growth Mode, where we are all a work in progress. In today's video, I want to talk about saving and savings rates, because there's a lot of articles, and if you do any sort of Google searches around how much you should be saving, if you listen to all the financial guys and the markets and everything, 10% is often the number that gets thrown around. I'm going to give you my take. So let's dive in. All right, so let's get into it. Um, basically, 10% is kind of that number that gets thrown around in terms of how much you should be saving and investing for the future. And frankly, the short answer is, I don't think that's enough. I think you need to be at around 20% or even more, even higher than that. And I wanna walk you through kind of uh, just some ideas, some examples on how you might think about this. And, I want, and then I also wanna get into um, my first job and kind of some early principles that really benefited me um, in the early years. So again, I have this overall target here of 20% plus. Um, this will go up and down, um, but I, I like to give that as the target and what you should be shooting for because I really don't think 10% um, is gonna get you there. So let's look at these kind of first, um, you know, columns here, thinking about kind of those teenage years, you know, maybe you've got a part-time job or something like that. You're um, in junior high or high school, um, starting to work, maybe you're making 500 bucks a month. Um, maybe you can be doing a little bit better than that. Um, but at that point, you don't have a lot of responsibility. You don't have a lot of expenses. You don't have, you know, um, maybe like car insurance or you're not having to pay rent, you know, typically some some big expenses. A lot of times you're not having to pay for food. Um, I know this isn't the case across the board, so I'm making some assumptions. But generally, when you're younger and you're still living at home, you don't have uh, as many expenses. So your savings rate can be a lot higher. So if you're making some money, um, I feel like, hey, save half of it. And this is something that my parents um, talk to us a lot about. We got an allowance and uh, when we were growing up, I think our allowances ranged between four and six dollars a week. And they always said, okay, here's your, you know, let's say it was four dollars. Here's your four dollars. You have to save half of it. And so we had to save the two dollars and then we, we had two dollars left for ourselves. Um, but what that did was it really instilled that habit and that mindset of, saving. And hey, I got this money, so I'm going to have some fun with some of it, and then I'm going to save some of it. And it really built that discipline. That that helped me a ton. So if you can start doing that early on, you'll actually start to stack up some cash pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Um, and so the themes here in these kind of years, I feel like are just don't blow it all, right? Like have some fun, um, you know, go to movies, go out to eat, you know, do stuff with your friends, buy some, buy some stuff that you want, um, but then stack some cash, right? Um, so if you, let's say you're making 500 a month, part-time job, you save 250, you know, that's three grand a year. Um, so even if you work two or three years in high school, like by the time you get out of high school, you got maybe close to 10 grand, which is pretty cool. Um, as you start moving up, you know, maybe you get your first full-time job, you're making three grand a month, that's 36 grand a year. Um, make sure that you're still saving. And this is, I would say these two phases here, the first full-time job and even moving up are probably the toughest. And you'll see, I have um, you know, 500 a month savings here, 800 here, and the savings rate is below 20%, but you'll see it's still north of 10%. Um, so annualized, you'd be saving six grand a year, or close to 10 grand a year. Um, so a few themes here, like house hack, this is a great time to, um, you know, get some roommates or, um, or anything like that. Um, don't go blowing a whole bunch of money and, and doing a bunch of stuff like that. Like, yes, you can still um, intentionally spend on things, um, and if you haven't watched my video on uh, seven reasons why you need a budget, I talk about um, budgeting versus kind of intentional spending. So you should go check that video out for more context there. Uh, and then this is where you start investing. So hopefully at this point, you've actually built up some savings from these early years. You've got an emergency fund already in place because you've been saving as a teenager. Uh, maybe you get out of college and you've got some, some money um, and now you can start making some progress here. Um, and again, this, this is underrated, I think. If you can get a roommate, a lot of times um, you can 
significantly lower your housing uh, costs, whether that's rent or if you buy a place and then you rent out a room or two, um, you might even be able to get your housing down to near zero, depending on your situation. Um, if you bought a house and, and were able to rent out more than one room. So um, this is kind of some estimates for this phase. And then as you start to move up the chain, you're trying to work towards earning more income, um, maybe you get married, um, something like that. And now maybe, and so this is household income. So this could be you um, singly or, you know, combined effort uh, for some of these numbers as you start moving up. Um, make sure that you do um, increase your lifestyle, but you don't increase it all the way with your earnings. I'm a huge fan of the philosophy of, hey, if you get a raise or you start making more, um, let's say you were making, you know, uh, five grand a month and now you're making six grand a month you know, maybe split the difference, put half of the increase towards saving and investing and half of the increase towards increasing lifestyle. So this is where you can really start to invest more aggressively, um, boost that savings rate again, get it above 20% if you can, and then increase your lifestyle too. You know, we've got a balance and, I, and everyone's balance is different. So I'm not going to try to advise you on, you know, 35% is the exact number. You know, it could be could be 20%. It could be 50%, you know, depending on um, how frugal you want to be and all of those different types of things. And that's why I always refer back to the intentional spending plan, um, which I talk about in the other video, um, because you really want to just choose very intentionally about where those dollars are going. Um, based on your personality, your hobbies, your goals, it's all very personal to you. So um, don't get caught up on these numbers. These are just general guidelines and kind of, again, these themes to follow along with. Um, and then if you're fortunate enough to continue moving up into the acceleration phase, um, maybe this is all earned income where you've got some of your investments are actually making money for you now too. Um, it could be through cash flow real estate or maybe dividend stocks or um, you know maybe you have a business, any of those types of things, you can start to accelerate your earnings. Um, again, increase your lifestyle, but increase your investments too. You know, I like splitting the difference, you know, um, grow lifestyle, have more fun, you know, um, but then grow your investment and savings rate too. Um, and really this is the phase where I think you can start to make a lot of progress towards working towards financial freedom, where you can build up enough assets so that those assets are actually covering your entire lifestyle. So again, these are just some themes to think about as you move through these. These aren't exact science. This is just a general um, philosophy on how to think through it. Um, but you'll notice like savings rate is really more aggressive early on. You kind of have this in-between zone where your expenses jump up from basically nothing to, okay, now I'm living on my own. I've got some things going on. I've got to take on all these expenses. This is a critical moment where you have to continue to keep that diligence around saving um, and putting money away and starting to invest and then see if you can work your way up um, you know, up the, the ladder, so to speak, in terms of earning more. Um, and then you can start to bump that savings rate up again. Um, I just want to talk about, you know, kind of how this played out um, for me with my uh, first job. And basically, I was a busser. And I don't know what the, the minimum wage is now for these types of jobs, but I was making five fifteen dollars an hour um, plus tips. So I got the leftover kind of scrap tips from the wait staff. I think they were making like two, two something an hour, but their tips were much stronger. I kind of got like a couple, couple of three bucks per, per wait staff uh, at the end of the night. Um, so basically um, I sort of, I didn't start working until I was 16 until I could drive. And I was working about 15 hours a week. I think it was three or four nights, depending on uh, the week. And so I was getting about $77 in um, hourly, and then I would get some tips, so about 60. So I was basically earning five, 550 bucks a month, roughly. Um, and, and again, my parents had just said, hey, save half of it and then do whatever you want with the other half. And I just got in this habit of saving almost all of it. I'm, I'm guesstimating it was probably about 90% because um, I'd come home and I'd have all these tips in cash and I would just kind of like put them in my drawer and then I would just keep stacking them up. And then I'd have these stacks of hundreds and I was like, wow, you can really make a lot of progress here. Um, and so that was kind of how I got into that early habit of saving and, and stacking cash. Um, and so I had probably about 500 a month left over. And so after a couple of years um, of high school, I had about that. Um, again, this is, I'm, I don't have the exact uh, account. Those accounts are all shut down, my savings account. But um, this is basically what I was saving. And 
and then I went to college um, and then I would, you know, go to college and then I would spend some money and then I would come back and I would work while I was um, back at home for breaks and summer and, and that sort of thing and just pick up hours and shifts where I could. Um, and so when I got out of college, I had $22,000 in my savings account. And that is actually what led to me buying my first property. And if you haven't watched that video, it's about how I turned $6,500 into a quarter of a million dollars. And, uh, and really this 22 grand, that's where I had the money to put the down payment on that property. And so this is one of the reasons I really uh, want to spread the word on this because um, these kind of lessons and steps in terms of savings rates um, will really help, you know, in, in these areas. But man, if you can start right here, you know, if you're um, in your teens or even if you're in your early 20s and you haven't taken on a lot of um, responsibility and expenses and you can stack some cash and you can get started early, that really starts to add up. And so, again, this was um, really a huge gift, you know, to me coming out of college and being able to actually make a move like that and get started early. Um, and so really for me, the kind of the big takeaways here are save aggressively while you can. You'll go through seasons in life where you can't as much, um, but I would urge you to make sure those seasons are as short as possible and you're always working towards boosting that. Um, and shoot for 20%. If you shoot for 10%, there's always going to be things that come up and then it ends up being 5% or 3% um, because of some unexpected thing. Um, so if you, at least if you shoot for 20, hopefully you'll hit a minimum of 15. Um, and if you can hit the 20 or beyond, then you're really going to set yourself up uh, for success. So um, hopefully this helps guys in terms of just thinking about some general themes um, and maybe just some encouragement to be a little more aggressive in your savings and again, all of this is in the spirit of trying to save money, to invest it in assets that will then pay you to cover your lifestyle. And once you've hit that point, you've hit financial freedom, you have enough assets that are paying for you to live, then technically you don't have to work anymore, even though I would imagine most of you want to. I know I will want to continue to work in some capacity, even if it's not full-time work, but I get to work on the things I want to work on when I want to work on them. And that is the ultimate goal in my mind. All right, guys, I hope this helped. If you like this video, if you got um, an, a new idea out of it or learned something, please share it with a friend, spread the word, subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll see you next time.